everybody. Welcome to Colorado Knits vlog podcast YouTube channel. My name is Carrie, otherwise known as Colorado Knits. You can find me on the interwebs on Ravelry and Instagram as Colorado Knits, and you can email me at hello at Colorado Knits.net. Um, this is episode 15. I think the last time I recorded was June. I did make a recording in July, but it was so boring that I didn't want to bore you all with it, so I didn't even post it. Um, so I have a lot of stuff to show you, stuff I've knit and a lot of stuff I purchased. So uh, I hope everyone is doing well. Today is Wednesday, August 31st. I had a little break in my work day, um, so I thought I would just get up here and make a quick recording. I am hot. I am very red. It is hot out. I just walked the dogs. Um, so I apologize for the way I look. Not that y'all really care, I don't think. So, hello! Um, let's get right into the knitting, I guess. Um, off the needles. Um, I don't have them in this room, um, but I do have five pair of Stanley Cup final socks. I started knitting them during the Western Conference Championship. I knit one sock a game and we swept. So then I decided to use those same, I have a dog visiting us, um, those same socks during the Stanley Cup. And that unfortunately went to six games, but I still managed to complete five pair of socks. So those are all done. Um, and there are pictures of them on Ravelry and they will be on the website. Um, so that was like pure stash busting. I had five skeins of static yarn from Knit Picks and I just busted through them. It was great. Um, so next off the needles, this is possibly one of my favorite things I have ever knit. This was a test knit I was working on the last time I recorded. I started it at Zombie Knit Apocalypse. It is called the Texture Me Cowl uh, by Elindria Knits. It is um, worked all in the round and it's a very simple pattern I used these are Always Be Kind Minis in her um, Sparkle Sock. She dyed them for me because the first, I started it and I started with white that had sparkle in it and decided all the colors needed to have sparkle. So Laura went ahead and dyed me some yarn. Um, and it's just a really simple knit and purl design. Um, and then of course it is knit in the round so you can hide that lovely, um, I didn't even worry about jogless stripes or anything on that. It is, um, this is, the main color is Plymouth Happy Feet 100 in um, a navy color. And I love this. Okay, it's way too hot to wear this. But this is like so comfy. I'm waiting for cold weather to wear this. Um, I decided, I did 36 pattern repeats, I think on a US 6. Maybe it's a US 5. Um, and I love it. I think it is just so comfy and soft. Um, Happy Feet is a 90-10. So it's, um, it's pretty soft. It's not, it's, it's good commercial yarn. I mean, I was worried I was gonna need to go purchase another skein um, because I decided to make it longer. And thankfully I had a skein, same dye lot. I was very lucky, but because it's commercial, I wouldn't even be that worried. Um, so just waiting for cool weather. I don't think we'll ever get that. Um, and again, this is the Texture Me Cowl by Alindria Knits. She also has Texture Me Socks and some other things. Um, and someone was saying those would make super cute leg warmers and I am kind of interested in making them into leg warmers. Uh, the next thing I finished is the Summer Tea t-shirt. Um, I don't know who this is by. I've made three of them now and I make them all with um, bamboo pop. So it's a DK cotton bamboo blend. Maybe it's all bamboo, I don't know. And this is kind of in a silvery blue color. Um, I made this one with no shaping. There are instructions for some shaping. I made no shaping. I just knit and knit and knit and knit. And I started this at Zombie Knit Apocalypse and I finished when I got home. And it's just a great t-shirt that I can wear and it looks like I'm dressed up at work when I'm wearing boxers or something on the bottom. Um, and it is machine washable and dryable. That is one thing I love about it. I have it in this color, I have it in a hot pink and I have it in navy blue, and I could pretty much make that my uniform right now in the late summer. Um, again, that's the Summer Tea, T-E-A, T-shirt. Um, let's see, what else did, oh! 
I started and finished the summer sorrel sweater um, or summer sorrel, not sure how you pronounce that. And this is by Wool and Pine. Um, one of the local yarn shops in town, Finger Play Studios, was doing a knit along for this. And I thought, well, that's fun, but I never participate in knit along because I always get excited and then I stop being excited. So, but it's been on my favorites list for a while. So I'm like, okay, I really want to knit this. So I went to Zombie Knit Apocalypse with the idea that I needed three skeins of some fun fingering weight yarn, speckly. Um, I've been into blue all summer. So um, when I got to the yarn adventure truck, I found this color. It spoke to me. It is Superfine Yarn Company out of Cleveland, Ohio. It is their Euclid base uh, and it has sparkle and it's called Galaxy and you can't really see the sparkle. Um, the Summer Sorrel, it's so great. It has these faux cables and they are super fun to do. Um, so highly recommend this pattern. It actually only took me two skeins of yarn. I have a ton of the yarn left behind me and I'm not sure what I'm gonna make. Sorry if I made you sick by kicking the camera. <laughs> I'm not sure what I'm gonna make with them, um, but it's lovely yarn and it has sparkle, so it could be socks. We'll see. Um, so that, those are the major things I did. And then I have made a slew of socks. Um, I brought in a few weeks ago, I brought in a whole bunch of yarn from my mothball stash of yarn and decided I was gonna air it out and have part of my stash be with me. So in that, I tried to find all of my Felici and I started making Felici socks. And these are not all of them. These are just two pair that I've done. Um, but Felici socks, folded hem, I'm totally hooked on this pattern and it uses really like exactly the 50 grams for me. So Felici folded hem socks. Um, and I just made modifications to the, um, kind of drawing a blank, to the uh, under the boardwalk shorty. It's either under the boardwalk shorty or under the boardwalk footy. And I've made like 20 pair of them. Um, and I actually have some for my sister sitting in my stash over there that I've actually already knit that I need to just mail to her. Um, I did run out of yarn on this one, which is weird. So I just randomly grabbed some yarn because if you're looking at my toes, I'm walking around without shoes on and that's weird. Um, looks, sounds like my dog is barking downstairs. Um, she is. She's not barking at anything, she's just barking. Um, so that's what I have finished. I've obviously, it's been months, so I've been pretty busy. Um, oh, I do, um, I do have another pair of socks and I don't have them in here, but I will show you. Actually, I have another thing I finished because I literally just took these off of my needles. I have a pair of Folded Hem Fishless Lips Kiss Heel socks in this yarn. Um, I also have a pair of Turkish bed socks in this yarn. And this is called Smarties. It is by Knitterly Things in their Vesper sock yarn. Um, I got it from a Simply Socks yarn company. I think it was their 13th birthday and this year is their 17th birthday. So it's been sitting in my stash for like four years. It's called Smarties. Um, and I wasn't sure, it looks actually more like Canadian Smarties than American Smarties because the colors are really bold. Um, but I did get two pair out of this skein. The other pair has a folded hem and I just did a fish lips kiss heel in the same yarn. And so it, I didn't quite have enough to make three pair of socks out of this, but I was fine with doing two. Um, so that's all of what I have finished. Um, I have a lot that I am also working on, but it's not kind of overwhelming yet. Um, there's nothing like, like there's a process for everything. So I will start with the most exciting. Uh, a couple of months ago, I made the Cape Cod sweater, lightweight sweater in navy. Did I mention I'm into blue? Um, and knew that when I finished it, I realized I definitely wanted to make another one and I wanted it in hot pink. And so I went to Zombie Knit Apocalypse looking for very specifically hot pink merino cashmere nylon and I wanted it from Sun Valley Fibers. Um, Jeanette's colors are just wonderful and her MCN is it's just 
so lovely. So she had a hot pink. It's called Fire Witch. And I had hemmed and hawed. I went in. There were so many vendors at Zombie and Apocalypse at the market that I figured I could find a speckle, a pink and white speckle, black, pink and white, something like that. And I couldn't. Um, so Jeanette set me up with some royal blue, like a really purpley blue with some with some pinks in it. Um, and I was going to use those. And I was sitting in the lobby right before the market closed. And I looked at my friends and said, I really want to use um, Fire Witch. No, not Fire Witch. Sorry, that is Fire Witch. I wanted to use Witch's Brew by... Um, Three Irish Girls yarn. You can kind of see it in there. Um, it's a very handy yarn bag. Um, and so they seem to go together very, very well. <coughs> Excuse me. So that is a hot pink sweater. Um, and it is cruising along. I am on the main body of the sweater um, and just finishing up my first skein of the Fire Witch. So um, the last one took me 10 days to knit. This one's taking a little bit longer um, because I'm working on 20 different things and working. So, um, but this is kind of, I'm on the mindless part of it right now. Um, the whole pattern on this, it is all slip stitches. There's no color work. Um, so you are just using knits and pearls and, and slipping them to get this great pattern. So I'm excited for this. My blue one stares at me again, waiting for cold weather is feels like it's never going to come um so that's the big project i have on the needles i have a continuing project if you could see how much stuff i have over here continuing project oh i did not say this was in my silver shed bag it's like a feed sack bag that i got at zombie knitpocalypse i won that and i love that um, the next thing is hiding in my hide and hammer um, bucket bag, and I love this bag too. I got this last winter because it's a very wintry color, and that's how long I've been working on this project. Um, this is the Sassy Spirit Wrap um, by Megan Williams, Run Knit Run, and um, that's the back of it. You don't want to see that. So this is a unique wrap. I've done another one of these in the collection called Making Connections. And basically you can throw it around your neck and then wrap it around you so it doesn't fall off, which for some of us, that is an issue. And you can see it's got this contrasting pattern on each side and it's a fun knit. I just have not felt like making shawls. They just have not been my thing. I've been like sweater, 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 sweater. I still want to make more sweaters. So um, when we made the move and I dealt with the moths, I got rid of a ton of my shawls because they were damaged. And um, now as I'm like, again, it's hot out right now, but shawls just are not doing it for me right now. So I didn't like feel much remorse that I had lost those shawls. I'm also working from home now. So while they'll be nice to have, I can pretty much wear anything I need um, or throw a blanket over me because I'm at home. Um, so there's that. Um, the next project, which actually I think is the last thing I have actively. Oh, sorry, I keep kicking the, the uh, camera. Um, when I was doing the heel, the toes on my Vesper socks, I really was loving the feeling of my Carbons needles. Um, as I do my all my socks mostly on nine inch circulars and then I will use a long, um, sing, uh, long circular to do the toes. And I love Carbon's needles, um, love, love, love them, but not for everything. And sometimes they have some issues with the joins or the, um, the tips, but I have been craving two at a time toe up socks on my Carbon's. It's like once the needles warm up, I just could whip through them. So I took out a kit that I had had, have had it for a year now because, um, they would be going on sale next week if she were doing kits, but she's not. This was a compilation kit from Mustache Yarn, um, and it has a beautiful sister bag with dog hair on it and human hair and all sorts of things. Um, and Beautiful Sister makes lovely bags. I have another one of these. 
Um, and it came with the colorway Yellowstone. It's a national park colorway. And she has two perfect pair um, skeins that you can wind up. It also came with goodies from Tough Woolens, which is another Texas company. And it came with um, a special Yellowstone flavor, flavor, Yellowstone scent uh, lotion bars, which sent me down the rabbit hole of wanting to make lotion bars again. Don't need to be doing other crafts right now. Um, and it came with this super cute patch um, that I will put on the bag, but I just haven't yet because I thought I lost it in the move. Um, but here's what you all really want to see. This is the literal perfect pair from Stacy of Mustache Yarn. And I'm just using a Progress Keeper for no reason other than it kind of matches. And that is from um, the Crazy Sock Lady. That's from Sock Camp. And I just, this was like one evening of knitting. And if you know, the toes just take forever. And there's yarn you have to deal with and stuff. And so I used a contrast or a coordinating uh, toe just in one of my um, row one yarn minis. And then it matches very well. Um, I am gonna try and get three pair of socks out of this yarn. So that means contrasting heels, toes, and cuffs. Um, on this, on a pair of Turkish bed socks and a pair of under the boardwalk shorties with contrast heels and no folded hem. Um, and the Turkish bed socks have to have contrast heels as well. I always do the Turkish bed socks last because um, I can actually just like make half of it a contrast toe and I don't care. Um, so these are cruising. I worked on them today during work, during a meeting. And um, I love to, I used to do all of my socks magic loop. And then I did them all two at a time magic loop. And sometimes it does feel like they take forever, but the stitch definition that I get with carbons is just ridiculous. Um, of course, it depends on the yarn, but it is just lovely. Um, so these will be Fish Lips Kiss Heel in a contrast, probably. We'll see where we are in the color sequence, but this is just some green. I think this is from Always Be Kind Yarn. I don't know. I threw it in when I got the kit, <laughs> and it's been in there ever since. So, um, so that is from Mustache Yarn. Now, as I was saying, next week, next Tuesday... The 5th, 6th, 6th of um, September, Stacy is having a national park uh, uh, update where she's going to have colors from a whole bunch of her national park lines. And I'm really excited to, do I need more? No, but they're so beautiful that I think I will be buying. She is doing a national uh, uh, camping knit along and I started these the week before the camping knit along. So I have to just order another one to participate, right? Um, so that's what's on, on and off my needles. Um, if you don't want to um, roll your eyes at how much I've purchased in the last couple of months, I am gonna straighten my camera, it's driving me crazy. Oh my gosh, Penny, Penny is barking. And she's barking at nothing. Her brother is probably at the top of the stairs and she does not like him and she's terrified of him. So she won't come up the stairs, but she wants me to know that she's down there. We just went out. She's totally fine. She's just being a drama queen. Um, so where do I start? Let's start with, I said I was really into sweaters. I have, I am getting ready to work on a, um, not a love note, a uh, cozy classic raglan in really obnoxious royal blue. Um, but I also saw Jamie of Cozy Up Knits wearing a really cute ranunculus. And when I see the pattern for the ranunculus, it's got these balloony sleeves and it's on this teeny little model. And it's just, and I love Knit Cafe Midori who wrote the pattern. She has a she does not use models that are, she uses like her mom, who's this beautiful, I don't know if it's her mom, her grandma, I don't know who it is, but she's like this 80 year old Japanese woman and it's just gorgeous. Um, and the, the, a lot of people use like blouse sleeves on it where they'll just do an incredible decrease. They'll go straight and then use a tight decrease and have this sort of blouse and sleeve. And I don't like that look, 
but Jamie was wearing the ranunculus and she did it in DK weight yarn and it wasn't overly large. It was comfortable, but it was, um, it was just like a really good look. So I said, that's it. That's what I want to make next. So, because I need to have three, two sweaters going simultaneously, but I couldn't find yarn that I wanted. So I contacted my friend. It's a, it can be done in any weight of yarn, but a lot of people do it with a fingering and mohair or with a DK weight yarn. And so I um, contacted my friend Michelle at Get Knit Faced and asked her if she would dye me some yarn. Um, and if she didn't have the bandwidth, it was right before our yarn crawl, um, if she didn't have the bandwidth, that was totally fine and there was no rush on it, definitely no rush on it. But she dyed the color in two days and had it for me when she came to Denver for a trunk show. Um, and she called it Carrie's Sweater because that's what it is. And it is um, this beautiful blue and it's got probably gray black in it. Um, sorry for the crinkles, sorry for the crinkles. Um, but it is absolutely gorgeous. It's gonna be lovely. So she custom dyed those for me. Now I realized once she showed me photos. Yeah, I'm going to look for the, I might have an issue. <laughs> I might have an issue with navy blue speckles, purple together, because this, this is going to be, but it's going to be with the aloft, so it's actually gonna look blue. Um, that's going to be for my cozy classic raglan. Well, it also might look a little bit like this. And this would be what I'm wearing now. So there's a theme going on in my life right now. And it's definitely natural with blue speckles, but um, such is life. And she dyed it and it's gorgeous and I love it. So I'm looking forward to knitting with that. And I might cast it on before I cast on the Cozy Classic Raglan for two reasons. Cozy Classic has a tubular cast on, which is kind of a pain in the butt. And it's knitting with two strands, which is kind of a pain in the butt at times. I don't mind it, but. Um, so there was that. And at the same time, the lemonade shop was having a shop update. And I haven't bought from Heather forever and she moved away. She lived in Colorado and now she's in Rhode Island, Connecticut, somewhere out east. Um, and she um, she had a few colors I've been waiting for, and one of them, she had Toxic Oreo, and I have been looking at this for as long as I have knit. Um, I should say as long as I have knit with Independent Dyer's yarn. So I got three skeins of Toxic Oreo. Um, it is a cream base with all sorts of colors and black mixed in, so it's a little dirty looking. I'm really excited to use this. And what I might do is a summer sorrel. I will go down a size. I did make the second size and I really think that I'm bigger than I am. Um, Cause this is really big and I'd be happy if it were a little more form fitting. And when I do this, I have like four inches of fabric um, and make it with longer sleeves. So, um, that might come to this. It might be a pavement. If you know me, pavement is my favorite sweater. I can make it in my sleep. Um, but this, the visual, the added visual interest, this also has a really cool I-cord cast on. Loved it. Um, so, bought that. Um, while we are talking about Michelle at Get Knit Face in Colorado, she, while we were at Zombie Knitpocalypse, was designing a a shawl called the Tahoe shawl for her, uh, for yarn along the Rockies, um, the local yarn crawl here. So I did not crawl this year. I went to my local yarn shop, um, which is, I can't even remember their name. That is so bad, but, um, yeah. So, she, uh, she was there and, um, I love the Tahoe shawl. She had it out on display. And so I decided, well, might as well buy some yarn. 
So I bought the exact skeins she made it in, which are Love is in the Air and uh, Agnostic. And it is a two color asymmetrical triangle shawl and the local yarn shop is called Not Just Yarn, K-N-O-T. And I would know it would come to me if I didn't think about it. So this is a cream with some oh, shocking purple. It's actually a berries <coughs> with some berry color. And then obviously this is a dark navy, but the two of them together, um, I didn't have to do any thought. And yeah, I'm gonna do her exact shawl. But imitation is most sincere form of flattery, right, Michelle? Um, okay, so there's that. While we're still on the subject of Michelle, she was doing a, oh, this is gonna crinkle a lot. She did a giveaway um, for a pride collection in July. Um, it was going to be five skeins. I thought 20 gram skeins, 50 gram skeins, um, fading from hot pink to purple. And I won it. I think it was rigged. She still says it was not rigged, but I'm very excited that I won it because look at this. Look at that lovely, lovely, lovely. Um, and I am very tempted that um, it will be, I just, she's got little stickers that are falling all over the place here. Um, I'm thinking this will be either the Party Cardi or the Radvent cardigan um, by Amba O'Brien and probably using, um, a cream color or gray for the um, collar and waistband. Absolutely lovely. And they are 100 grams gain. So this is, this is heavy, 500 grams a yard. Um, but wait, don't answer yet. Um, I was, I don't like the word enabled. I was inspired to purchase something from Northwoods Fiber Company um, they had a shop update and they were not sure that they were going to repeat this colorway anymore. These colorways, the set, it's now a regular set on their website. So they are, but you know, there were only like two. And so I had to have it. Um, this was not an inexpensive purchase, but this also might be the party cardi or a rad vent. Um, I could do like a, I could do a faded pavement. I could do almost anything, but this one, you guys, this is ridiculous. I think the colors, it's blowing it out a little. It's coming across a little more neon than it is, but it is, it is just gorgeous. Um, her name is Northwoods Fibers, um, and this is 7525. Um, and I'm really, I'd like to be able to see if it's, this is a little more accurate color. I'm um, really looking forward to whatever I make with this, but obviously I have a lot of stuff I got to knit in the interim. Um, so on to the club stuff. Um, I mentioned Simply Socks Yarn Company and they had their 17th anniversary this year. We have another dog visiting us. Um, and so they offered an incredible deal on a three month sock club. I have, this was part of, as I mentioned, I think their 13th or 14th sock club. And, um, this year, it was $100 for three months worth of yarn. So even if it's one skein, that's ridiculous. Um, but it's two skeins a month for three months. And I just could not turn it down because they always have unique colors. Um, so I have two months worth and my third one should probably ship today. Um, so I'm just gonna show you in the bag I'm not removing stuff from bags because of moths, just in case we think we have them under control. But, and somehow I'm gonna figure something out to do with these. Um, it might be a find your fade shawl, or I might dare to try doing something like an actual fade that I make up. So um, this is their small batch sock. It is, um, they dye it in house. They have someone dyeing it. So this was, one month, um, and yay, it's blues and pinks. And then here, this is out of the bag, so I can actually show you. This is the second month. These two go together great. Um, 
and could easily do a coordinating two color shawl, but I'd like to see more contrast. But this one, oh my gosh, check that out. Look at those colors. I'm so curious how this is going to knit up. Very excited to see that. Um, my third month should be coming in the mail. I will probably, it'll go out this week and I'll probably get it next week. Um, I did not re-up my Apple Yarns Company subscription. I <clears throat> have several single skeins from them, which my dog is smelling right now. <coughs> Excuse me. And I want to put those together into a fade and then I think I will probably start it up again next year. Um, it was a six month subscription, so it was a long commitment. Um, it was a great price and I paid for it Black Friday and got a free month, so it was great. But um, I still love, <laughs> Penny's barking again. I do still love Apple Yarns and they are based in uh, Bellingham, Washington. And so I, um, today, this week I ordered, or a few weeks ago, they do mystery boxes. Um, you know you're gonna get sock weight yarn and a treat or two. And I think it was $34. Oh, they didn't itemize it for me. But yes, I think it was $34. And I am a member of their VIP club. So it was, um, I get 10% off. And they sent, let's go through the boring stuff. They sent a conditioning wash. So a nice wool wash with Castile soap. Castile soap is the bomb. And the treat they included was a, a bag of, a giant bag of local popcorn. So um, this is Harvey's Butter Rum Batter LLC popcorn from Bremerton, Washington. Um, and they are minority and women owned apparently. So very excited about this. It's been sitting in the box and I didn't show the man um, because I knew if I showed him, he would be fine. Um, and the yarn I got is super fun. It is, it's all about you self-striping sock. It's called Falling Star. Um, it is an 80-20 and it is self-striping. And look at those colors. Little bit Mardi Gras-ish, no green, but um, kind of reminds me of Harlequin colors for some reason. I don't know, but it's purple and yellow and blue and gray. So very pretty. Love self-striping. Um, so maybe I'll wind it in half and make a pair of um, uh, two at a time. I don't know, but super cute and really excited to have wool wash because obviously I have a lot of stuff I have to wash. Um, and I will be ordering another one of these. Uh, for 35 bucks, that was a steal. Um, I am not an affiliate of theirs. So I don't get any commission. I just stumbled across them when I bought some Emma's yarn, um, a kit uh, from Emma's yarn that I still haven't knit. Um, and then I fell in love with their, um, stuff. So, and my final thing that I purchased, um, Always Be Kind Yarn, my friend Laura was doing an update, a Christmas in July update, and she had some holiday speckles. I felt I needed holiday speckles. Um, I have some holiday socks, but I thought, uh, this is called Christmas Confetti. Look, it's Christmas confetti. It's got reds and dark reds and greens and blues. It's got a little bit of everything. So, and her yarn, oh, this is her 7525 and it, it is so soft. It feels so great for 7525 and it's so round and plump. So, always be kind yarn. Um, she's, as you know, favorite of mine. And then I have one more. Just when you thought I couldn't buy any more yarn. How am I going to knit all this yarn? Um, I did not buy the yarn this week. I did spend my lunch hour looking at spinning videos. Um, I didn't buy any fiber. So I am back on the bandwagon for Artistic Yarn by Abby. Um, I have a bunch of hers to knit up. I love her yarn. She's always creative in her things. And this is this month's box. Um... It's strawberry shortcake. She always does cute little packaging too. Um, her subscription is $45, so it's not inexpensive. Um, and it usually comes with a treat, it comes beautifully packaged, comes with a treat, a full skein of 100 grams of self-striping yarn and a 20 gram mini and some sort of treat. So 
Um, let's see, it says, thank you for subscribing, introducing Strawberry Shortcake. I hope you love it. Oh, I love it. I completely love it. It is, you might think, I would call this like pink lemonade. Um, comes with a little strawberry shortcake or a little strawberry stitch marker. It's pinks and yellows and whites and dark pink, almost red. And then the mini that she gives you this time is this beautiful light green. And it's going to speckle up like a strawberry shortcake. So super cute. Um, and she's a 75-25. It's a little bit thinner. Um, definitely thinner than Laura's Always Be Kind yarn. But her stitch definition is always just off the charts for me. And then the extras this month, um, it's a cute little, little notions pouch. And um, she sent some tea, some strawberry shortcake tea, and this little silicone tea infuser. Super cute. So, um, love this box. Can't wait to knit it. Uh, but I got a lot of other stuff to knit along the way. Um, and this is a, while it is the end of strawberry season here, these are very springtime socks, so I may wait till like February to cast these on. Um, a lot of time her yarn will come in our organza bag, and I am going to start putting all of my yarn in organza bags because that will hopefully slow moths have any moths. This is one of my next cast-ons. This is one of Artistic Yarn by Abby's um, older colors. It is called Steampunk Stripe. It is not my favorite colors. I like the gray and the yellow and the black, but it's got brown in it. But it's cute, and I just feel like it'll make perfect two-at-a-time socks, and it has sparkle. So I will be working on that, and this, um, this mini is this it looks really bright there, but it's actually a dirty yellow. It's got a tiny bit of um, like a black overwash almost, very light. That or my eyes are going bad, which is also a possibility. So that, this I did not buy, this I have had. This I've had, but it was sitting here on my um, craft table because I need to wind it up. Um, and then two other little things that I bought. I bought a new ball winder, as you can see. Um, and I, um, did not, I got it from a vendor in India where Knitter's Pride gets all of theirs made. So I just went straight to the source, um, which is nice. I still think I like my other ball winder more, my, my big, um, uh, metal one. And then these came, these are the most adorable stitch markers and, um, I think I can tell you who had them. I saved her cute box. Hickory Lane Fiber Company. And she sent, you guys can see my infect, my allergy, allergy hand where I got bit this morning by a bug. Um, if you can see, it's a little cow. It's a little Bessie. She's got a little flower on her head. And I got two of them and they're just adorable. They're just too cute for words. So, um, I've waited for these. I ordered them in like, I think May, maybe April, and they arrived in like July. So that was really cool to get those. So that is a lot of yarn. That is a lot of knitting that will be happening. Um, so thanks for joining me. Um, I'll give a quick life update. I know a lot of people don't care. So uh, that is all the yarny goodness talk. Um, oh, it's not quite all the yarny goodness talk. There is one more, two more things. Um, a colleague at work is having a baby. So of course I wanted to make her a baby blanket. And I shopped and shopped and shopped and shopped and couldn't find the blanket I wanted to make. I really had my heart set on a Pearl Soho short row blanket. But then I was like, uh, do I want to knit it? And then I found out she's having the baby early. Um, so... I decided I needed to crochet it because I could whip it out quickly. Um, so I chose the Crochet Rainbow Moss Stitch Blanket by Tiffany Brown of Daisy Farm Crafts. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and this is a cute little blanket. Obviously it's a little blanket because it's a baby blanket. Um, and it is made with Karen Simply Soft. And so it'll be inexpensive and quick. And I ordered the yarn directly from Karen 
um, from Coates and Clark because they had um, mini skeins and I didn't want full, I did not want 10 full skeins of acrylic that I would never use. So they had these little mini skein kit and so I bought that and it's supposed to arrive tomorrow, but I don't think it will. Um, I think it won't arrive till Monday. And my friend was supposed to be having the, her baby on the 23rd and now it's the 16th. So I'm hoping that it arrives tomorrow and then I have a three day weekend to crochet till the cows come home and watch college football. So, um, so yeah, so that's the end of the yarny goodness. Um, so thank you. Uh, hopefully I'll have a blanket or a picture of a blanket to show you next time. Um, on to the life updates. Let's see. There's been a few reasons I did not record for quite some time. The first being I did record and it was really boring. And this one was probably really boring too, but you're here. Um, but also I mentioned I started a new job and <laughs> Penny is tired of me recording apparently, so we'll wrap this up quickly. Um, uh, I started a new job and so I'm just getting into it. I am working from home and it's awesome. I have a great team. I have um, everyone in the entire company is remote um, and I'm just finding my groove. I've written my first few grants. Uh, they still don't have a ton of work for me to do, which I'm taking advantage of because in about a month and a half, I'm going to be slammed. Like October, November, I will be super busy. Um, but I've really enjoyed being able to write and it actually has helped me because now I'm actually putting my stuff on my blog, um, my projects, because I'm like, oh, well, I'm already writing right now. So during lunch, I'll type a blog post about my socks or whatever. Um, so I'm trying to move away from Ravelry and keeping all of my projects on my blog. I'll probably still put them on Ravelry because it kind of prompts me to put in my needle size and prompts me to put in the yarn in the color way because um, sometimes I forget that. But um, so I will be, um, um, so work is good. Uh, and they give us two hours off on Friday afternoons and that ends this Friday because summer ends, but that's um, really appreciated. And um, that's about it. So um, work has been good. The man meanwhile had more orthopedic issues. If you've been with me a while, you know he has a lot of orthopedic issues. Poor guy, he had two discs in his neck replaced. I have to point to this is your neck. Um, two discs in his neck replaced 18 months ago. And as is the case when you get discs replaced in your back, anywhere on your spine, that they will deteriorate above and below. The discs above and below will also deteriorate because while you replace them, it still puts extra stress on those others. So he um, basically has arthritis in his neck and he was not able to sleep for weeks. And when he's not able to sleep for weeks, I'm not able to sleep for weeks. So, it was a grumpy household for a few weeks um, and thankfully he was able to get in to uh, the spine folks and because he works at the hospital and knows them they like rushed through his authorizations and he was able to get some injections and he's doing much better and we bought a new mattress and here is my tip for women of a certain age stay away from foam mattresses memory foam mattresses those things are brutally hot um, I have been miserable <laughs> since we moved to this house and I thought it was because of where the bedroom is and being a 50 year old woman. No, it was the mattress. So I um, got a new mattress. I feel like a grown up. Um, I used my tax refund for that, my state tax refund. So um, my husband got to pay down debt and I got to buy a mattress, um, but it's all good. So now I sleep at night, he sleeps at night. Um, and otherwise we thought Penny Dog, who you have heard barking like a sea lion, um, we thought she had, um, we really thought like the end was near for her. She is, found out she's only 11 and a half. We thought she was 13, she's a golden retriever. She has a hard time walking. We have pergo flooring, we have, you know, laminate wood flooring and she has, she has a hard time walking and that's normal for their hips to start to go out as they get older. So we thought, oh, she's going, she's going downhill fast. So we got her these little dog braces and we got little pads that she can put on her feet so she doesn't slide around as much. And she just was super lethargic. And then I'm like, I 
was snuggling with her and I'm like, you know what? I think she has an ear infection. Um, like she was having the hardest time walking. So I started cleaning her ears. Didn't have an ear infection. We took her to the vet. The vet's like, her ears are clean as can be. You did a great job of cleaning them. Uh, turns out she has mild vestibular syndrome, but she has, I hate the heat itis. She takes after me. She hates the heat. She is a bump on a log if it is hot. She won't do anything. She's completely lethargic. The mornings that it's been 60 degrees out, she could walk for like an hour and just keep going and going and going and going. And she's happy as can be. And <clears throat> the vet does think she has mild vestibular sy syndrome, which is totally common with older dogs, particularly golden retrievers. But by the time we got home from the vet, it was like 105 the day we went to the vet. So we get her home, we get her out of the car. She sleeps all night. The next day she was just like, I'm a happy camper. Like she was absolutely fine. So we're very happy about that. We adopted her, you know, when she was 11 years old, knowing that we were, she was gonna live out her golden years with us. But my husband was so worried that her golden years was golden year. And so we think, we think she's doing fine and she'll do great. And um, she has chosen the man as her human. She loves me, but he is her human. He is absolutely like, if, if he's home, she is at his side. I am an afterthought when he's home and it's pretty cute. So um, that's what's going on in our lives. Um, thanks for joining me. I wish I had any something erudite to say. Oh, I do. I do. Um, I say it all the time. I'm always like knit the yarn. And that's what I've been doing. Knit the yarn. This has been sitting in my stash for four years. I knit the yarn. Um, and so I picked up, I just keep babbling on here. I picked up, I mentioned I picked out a bunch of yarn out of my stash to air out and now it's ready to knit. And so I'm trying to knit out of this bin on the floor here. Um, and one of the skeins in it is from One Twisted Tree. And I have had this yarn, whew, 2012, 2013, I don't know when um, Danny used to dye yarn. Um, Danny has been out of business from yarn dyeing for years and I want, I pulled this out and it's one of those things you're like, oh, but I don't want to knit it because she's not dying. So what are you going to do? Just look at it? No, I am going to make two at a time, toe up beautiful self-striping socks with this yarn. I'm so excited to do that. I have a bunch of other yarns like that. I have this, this Mad Tosh Twist Light um, that is a Dios de los Muertos specialty color that they had that I'm like, I need to knit that. Um, this is another one of those. This is from Flock Fibers. This is um, uh, Sour Lemon. And this this actually came from the same um, sock club as Knitterly Things. So again, this is at least four years old and it comes with a mini. Guess what it's gonna be? Two at a time, toe up socks. <laughs> so I have a ton of yarn in here and this is only just like scratching the surface of my stash. So um, I'm intending to knit that stuff. Um, my husband has shelves and shelves of bourbon and he has decided, you know what? I'm just gonna drink it. Like, what do you buy it for? You don't buy it to look at it. So, and if the bottle's pretty, then save the bottle afterwards, but enjoy the stuff that's in it. So enjoy the socks, enjoy the sweater, enjoy whatever you make out of it, but enjoy the yarn and knit the yarn. So knit what you love, love what you knit, and have a great couple of weeks, and I'll see you in a week or two.